I want to go through and talk a little bit about what Fidel Castro actually did, because the left will never tell you straight exactly what was wrong with Fidel Castro, because the thing about Fidel Castro for the left is the left is pretty much fine. The left is pretty much okay with anything that, the, that other leftists do. They, they, they're not in love with the mass murder, but if mass murder has to get done in order to create the new utopia, they can live with it. So the front page of the New York Times said, a revolutionary who defied the U.S. and held Cuba in his thrall. Well, he didn't actually hold Cuba in his thrall. He actually created a giant gulag and sentenced everybody in the country to stay in it. And he wasn't a revolutionary so much as he was a socialist dictator who murdered all dissidents. Um, but I think that it's important to go through some of the facts about, about Fidel Castro. So we will do that today. So first of all, Fidel Castro took over the country in 1959. He took over from a guy named General Batista. General Batista was also a dictator, but he was sort of a right-wing dictator. Uh, and General Batista, under Batista, Cuba was one of the richest countries in Latin America. Uh, it was on the upswing. It was sort of like, uh, not a good guy, Batista, but m m sort of like Pinochet, except less violent. Uh, he was eventually going to end up transitioning into uh, a, d a form of democracy in all likelihood. Instead, there was a violent revolution with Castro at its source. And here is Fidel Castro taking power. Here's what it looked like. Outside Havana's presidential palace, hundreds of thousands rally at the call of revolutionary leader Fidel Castro, who estimated their number at a million. Most of the throng wears the colors of Castro's 26th of July movement. They are in an exultant mood as the man who overthrew the Batista dictatorship calls on them to approve the public trials and executions of pro-Batista figures guilty of war crimes and atrocities. The executions, some 250 to date, have been widely criticized by many as too hasty and summary, even if justified. Says Castro, the Cuban revolutionary government has no reason to offer explanations to America or to anyone except the people of Cuba. Castro asks his audience if it favors the summary court-martial and gets his answer in a roar of approval. All in all, he ended up executing thousands and thousands of people. Uh, he conspired with the mass murderer Che Guevara, we'll talk about Che in just a minute, to overthrow Fulgencia Batista, who was that dictator, and then he began a guerrilla campaign resulting in his takeover of the island. He immediately exiled priests, he exiled all, all religious figures, he destroyed religious schools, he nationalized all businesses, he imprisoned and murdered his, en murdered his enemies. Within the first three months, he had between 600 and 1,100 people shot. Che Guevara said, there's a direct quote from Che, this, this piece of crap who you see people walking around with his face on t-shirts. It's like walking around, uh, again, with a Stalin t-shirt. He said, to send men to the firing squad, judicial proof is unnecessary, is what Che Guevara said. These procedures are an archaic, bourgeois detail. This is a revolution. And a revolutionary must become a cold-killing machine motivated by pure hate. We must create a pedagogy of the paradigm. That's the, the execution wall. So you have to teach people through the execution wall. Castro actually imprisoned more of his citizens by percentage than Hitler or Stalin. By 1961, he had imprisoned 300,000 human beings. He asked the Soviet Union to actually nuke the United States in 1961 during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Castro supported terrorist groups all over the world, ranging from FARC in Colombia to Shining Path in Peru and the Sandinistas in Nicaragua. Hundreds of thousands of Cubans fled. Millions, actually. Many drowned in the ocean. Thousands of people drowned in the ocean as they attempted to sail to Florida. Between 1959 and 1992, at least 2 million Cubans fled Cuba. Now, some of the lies that you'll be told is that he didn't impoverish Cuba. He absolutely did. The average GDP per capita in, in Cuba, uh, when Castro took over, was a little bit over $2,000 per person per year. By 1999, the average GDP per capita, remember, this is a 40-year period. By 1999, the per capita GDP in the nation was $2,300. So it had advanced $300 in 40 years. According to Discover the Networks, the average daily wage for agriculture workers in Cuba in 1958 was 3 bucks. The average daily wage in France at the time was $2.73. Cuba had in 1958, the year before Castro took over, the highest standard of living uh, of any Latin American country and half of Europe. Here's the Wall Street Journal. The Cuba that Castro inherited was developing but relatively prosperous and ranked third in Latin America in doctors and dentists and daily calorie consumption per capita. Its infant mortality rate was the lowest in the region and the 13th lowest in the world. Cubans were among the most literate Latins and had a vibrant civic life with private, professional, commercial, religious, and charitable organizations. Castro destroyed all of it. He ruined agriculture by imposing collective farms, making Cuba dependent first on the Soviets and later on oil from Hugo Chavez's Venezuela. In the past half century, Cuba's export growth has been less than Hades. 
And now even doctors are scarce because so many are sent abroad to earn foreign currency. Hospitals don't even have sheets or aspirin. The average monthly income is $20. Government food rations are inadequate. As for that health care, you always hear about the Cuban health care. Absolute crap. There are three systems. There are the socialist revolutionaries who get good care. There are the foreigners who come and pay with cash, like Fat Michael Moore. And then there is, and then there is the actual people of Cuba. This is according to Jay Nordlinger of National Review. He said, hospitals and clinics are crumbling. Conditions are so unsanitary, patients may be better off at home, whatever home is. If they do have to go to the hospital, they must bring their own bed sheets, soap, towels, food, light bulbs, even toilet paper. That's how poor health care is. Imagine you go to the hospital and you have to bring your own light bulbs and toilet paper. Basic medications are scarce. Doctors have been known to reuse latex gloves. Okay, the whole point of latex gloves is that you don't reuse them. As for the infant mortality rate, they're constantly bragging about the infant mortality rate. That's because they do all sorts of prenatal checkups, so they want to keep that statistic artificially high. And the way that they do that is they do prenatal checkups. If there's any danger to the pregnancy at all, they simply abort the kid. So the abortion rates in Cuba are extraordinarily, extraordinarily high. It really is a horrifying system of government, and that's been brought about by, by the Castros. But look how the media just worship the Castro. So this is Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan uh, had on Castro. Uh, this is 1961, I believe, uh, or 1959. And here's Ed Sullivan, who's then the most popular television host in the United States, praising Fidel Castro. Well, now, in, in school, I understand you were a very fine student, a very fine athlete. Were you a baseball pitcher? Yes, a baseball pitcher. Basketball, basketball, track, yeah. team, football, okay. and every, every, everything, every sport. Well, undoubtedly, all of that exercise you did in school prepared you for this role. Now. Yes, it helped me very much now in this world. You know, this is a fine young man, and a very smart young man. With the help of God and our prayers, and with the help of the American government, he will come up with the sort of democracy down there that America should have. He'll create the sort of democracy America should have? Unbelievable. This is how the media treated Fidel Castro, a mass-murdering dictator. Mass-murdering dictator. Castro on Face the Nation. Here is, here is Castro appearing on Face the Nation. This is from 1959. Because public opinion in Cuba is now very strong and with a tremendous force. Nobody is enough powerful to op opposite now the public opinion of the free country of Cuba. Dr. Okay, so he says that public opinion will drive, and this is always what socialist revolutionaries, would-be dictators say. Whenever somebody talks about public opinion making might right, that's never a good thing. It's why demagogues are scary, right? People who come up and they say, well, the public says I can do this. It doesn't matter what the law says. It doesn't matter what the Constitution says. The people want it. We'll have summary executions. Again, tens of thousands of people murdered, hundreds of thousands of people imprisoned by Fidel Castro. Okay, here's Che Guevara at the, at the United Nations talking about human rights. It says, as Fidel Castro has said, so long as the concept of sovereignty exists as the prerogative of nations and of independent peoples, as a right of all peoples, we will not accept the exclusion of our people from that right. Nosotros no aceptaremos la exclusión de nuestro pueblo de ese derecho. Mientras el mundo so long as the world is governed by these principles, so long as the world is governed by those concepts that have universal validity, because they are universally accepted and recognized by the peoples, we will not accept the attempt to deprive us of any of those rights, and we will renounce none of those rights. So he's basically saying here, this is Che Guevara in 1964 in front of the United Nations. Three years later, he was dead, and he was dead because uh, he went into other parts of Latin America and attempted to lead coups there, communist coups there. So he's talking there about how nobody should interfere with Cuba, and then he promptly went to Latin America and attempted to start a revolution in Bolivia uh, and was killed for his trouble. Thank God. He was a really terrible human being, Che Guevara. For, you want to see what it was like for Cubans living in, in Castro's Cuba. People still are, by the way, thanks to the incompetence of Barack Obama and this idiotic policy imposed over the last 50 years in the United States. I've never been in favor of this policy that the United States has with regard to, uh, to non-assassination. Uh, it makes no sense to me. I don't see why literally millions upon millions, generations of people should live in terror and suffering because we have to let an old piece of crap, like uh, an old, disgusting, desiccated piece of human debris like Fidel Castro live. We would have been better off killing him. Um, but uh, but here's, here's what it was like in Cuba and still is like in Cuba. People can't escape. It's a giant prison. Uh, here is uh, some footage of Cuban refugees. Here's what people were doing just to get out of Castro's Cuba while all of these Westerners were praising Cuba as this halcyon of light and liberty. Here is, here's what it actually looked like for people trying to get out. In 2003, news media the world over broadcast this image, a dozen Cubans sailing for freedom. 
aboard an old green Chevy truck. Luis and his three-year-old son, Angel, were on board. Luis explained to me that few new cars entered Cuba after the revolution in the 1950s, but his old one worked just fine. He tells me he was scared, building the boat in secret and pushing from shore in the dark of night. But he was willing to risk everything for a better life in America. Okay, I mean, this is, again, hundreds of thousands of people uh, attempting to escape Cuba. In, in the early 1980s, there were so many people trying to escape that Fidel Castro actually said fine. And then he sent uh, a, a huge number of kind of the, the Cuban criminal class. Uh, he let them escape. He let all the criminals go to, to Miami. Uh, and that's why you saw a major upsurge in crime and, and the drug trade in Miami uh, in the early part of the 1980s. But people have been attempting to float in cars. I mean, this is how you ended up with, with the situation uh, with... Um, the, what was the uh, Gonzalez? What, what was the name of the, the kid who was deported back to Cuba uh, after his after his dad died on the way over uh, from or his mother died on the way over from Cuba and then he was deported back to Cuba uh, thanks to the Clinton administration. Uh, people have been attempting to get out of Cuba for for 50 years thanks to the Castros. Uh, here's some footage of, of Castro's prisoners speaking about what it was like to be a dissident in Castro's Cuba. It was like being in the depths of hell. The suffering made me a little crazy. But my husband and children wrote to me and that kept me going, she said. Callardo and her husband Angel were arrested at a small anti-government demonstration in May 2014. Their crime, they say, chanting down with Fidel Castro. Education for Cubans has been about fear and how to be afraid, about how to avoid confrontation with the authorities because they have power. They teach you what they want you to know, but not really what goes on in the world, he said. Both were released on January 8th, according to their prison papers. The pair spent eight months behind bars in what they say were appalling conditions. Okay, and that's not unusual. Lots of people died and just went missing uh, in, in Castro's prisons. Uh, Castro had a special hatred for homosexuals, so very early in his regime, he basically rounded up homosexuals. Here is testimony from some, some gay folks who were rounded up by Fidel Castro and put in prison camps. La juventud, la Unión de Jóvenes Comunistas so llevaba una lista de los candidatos a ser depurados. Algunos de estos candidatos sabían que iban a ser depurados y por lo tanto no iban. Otros sabían, no lo sabían y se daban cuenta allí. Las humillaciones the humiliation during these meetings de consisted in forcing all those present que to hurl every imaginable insult at each person being purged. Eh, y era algo de lo que no one could escape no it. Y había gente que, there were people que who no couldn't lo bear it, nunca se who were shocked and killed themselves, se suicidaban porque enfrentarse, not only because no of the public humiliation, esta pública, but they were ashamed the before their families a su, a too. Familiar, tener que a la casa they had decir, to go home and say, al padre, I was, a, madre, I was expelled because I was accused of being homosexual. homosexual. Some killed themselves. Okay, that was not uncommon in Castro's Cuba. Uh, and uh, again, th this is somebody who m mass executions were not were not uncommon uh, in Castro's Cuba. Here is a here is a, a footage of one of the original executions. This was released by the Castro regime very early on. Uh, this was uh, supposedly a member of uh, Batista's regime. So delightful folks, delightful folks. The reason that I do all of this is because the left in America and in the West glorify people like Castro. They really do. Uh, and it's truly disgusting.